is almost impossible to be dispatched or <coughs> eliminated in one day because Hamas is not sitting in Gaza. Nowadays, Hamas is all over the world, and Hamas is an ideology. It's not a personality. Yep. Yes. Unless in a kindergarten in schools in Gaza, every day they are preparing 300,000 future Hamas fighters. Yep. It's impossible. I know. That's why we need to start a holistic approach, starting with education, like uh, Sir said, because education and eliminating the, any kind of leak of Hamas influence on fresh brains and mm -hmm. brainwashing of kids, which are uh, uh, having a lot of uh, video clips nowadays in internet and sure. social media that I will ram uh, the car uh, over the Jew, I will kill Jew, and yep. all this stuff. This is a language of hatred. Yep. This is not a language of the peace, but they are teachers yep. are teaching. Yep. So, they are taught yep. to the next generation. Agree. And yes, kids are taking all what their yep. parents have said. So let me just answer that, and then if you had a second question, you can ask that. Yeah. I agree completely. And this is why Israel must occupy Gaza. It must go into the schools and change the curriculum. It must prevent that brainwashing from happening. It cannot just go in and leave and say, okay, we'll give it to the Palestinian Authority, let them do it. Because the fact is, if you go to the books in the West Bank, same stuff is being taught over there. They have to stay there and they have to make sure that these schools don't become machines of propaganda. And you're absolutely right that Hamas is an international movement. But this is the thing about Hamas, and it's true about ISIS and Al-Qaeda. It's interesting. ISIS was big a long t you know, 10 years ago, remember? And it was all over Europe. And there were terrorist attacks every day in Europe. And it seemed like it was only going to grow, and there was no way to stop ISIS because they were everywhere. And my argument at the time was, if you destroy Hamas in Iraq and Syria, if you make it clear that they will never succeed in establishing the Caliphate or whatever it is that they were after, people will not join them in Europe. You know, even, even bad people want to support a winner. And how are students? What's that? Students of Harvard. Well, we'll get to students of Harvard. They want to support a winner. They want to support an ideology that they think can win. Right now, support for Hamas is huge. Why? Because they're winning. They just managed to, you know, take Israel, the, probably the second strongest military force in the world, and bring it, in a sense, to its knees. And the world is looking and saying, whoa, these Hamas people, they're strong and powerful. I want to join. But if you make them weak, if you destroy their base in Gaza, if you destroy their leadership, and I, I, you know, I'll say something about their leadership in Qatar in a minute. If you destroy their leadership, then people will look at them and say, oh, Hamas is weak. I'll have to look for somebody else to, you know, some other element. And if the West broadly embraces the idea of destroying Hezbollah, of ultimately destroying Iran, then the movement will disappear completely. The movement is driven by the fact that they think they can be successful. It's driven by the weakness of the West. The weaker the West, the weaker Israel is, the bigger the movement becomes. The stronger Israel and the West are, the weaker the movement will be. Let me say something about Qatar. Qatar is a fascinating, fascinating country. Qatar is a country that funds terrorism. It funds Hamas. It funded ISIS. It funded Al-Qaeda. Everybody Taliban. knew... What's that? And Taliban. And Taliban. And everybody knew this. Everybody knew that Qatar was funding ISIS. And yet... The central command, the U.S. central command for all operations in the Middle East is in Qatar. The largest U.S. Air Force base in the Middle East is in Qatar. Literally, airplanes would leave Qatar to bomb ISIS while money flowed from, uh, from Qatar to ISIS bank accounts. This is how weak and stupid America is. Just to express my view on, on American administrations. This is pathetic. Your enemy is right there. You have all the military forces in the world. I mean, Qatar is a tiny little country with nothing. Yeah, 350,000 people. What's that? 350,000 people. But they're rich because they have oil and they have a port. And yet, America tolerates them.
defending its enemies. No question asked. I mean, if, at the very least, the United States should shut down all its military bases in Qatar and leave, right? Because right now, they're paying the money, they, the Americans go out shopping, they support the economy, they, all their money flows into the enemies. Right now, military bases of the United States are being attacked in uh, Iraq and in Syria by elements funded by Qatar. And wh who is Qatar hosting? All the Hamas leadership lives in Qatar. The Four Seasons hotel chain actually put out an email saying, they're not staying at the Four Seasons. Actually, it's Ismail Khania in Qatar. Yes, exactly. Or the entire political leadership. And this is something else the Israelis have to understand, is you're not going to get rid of Hamas by just destroying its military leadership. They have to get its political leaders, and they have to get the spiritual leaders. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for being here.